Welcome. My name is Diana Waring, and I'm glad you're here. Today is the second of eight interviews I'm conducting with the different kinds of smart that reside in our brains. As I mentioned in the first interview, the purpose is to highlight the wide variety of strengths that are possible in each smart. And now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Word Smart, coming to us from her home inside the brain. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here today. And I'm especially pleased that your interest is in seeing the incredible breadth of expression possible when using the SMART. It's far more extensive than most people understand. Well, let's get started then. Would you please describe for us what word smart refers to? It would be my pleasure. Now, as you all know, language is one of the greatest gifts we have. The ability to communicate thoughts and ideas through both the spoken and written word are vital to humanity. Ah, so word smart refers to language, to speaking and writing and reading. Yes, that's a good place to start. When we think of what it means to be smart with words, there are so many ways to do this. For instance, think about poetry. Using both the meaning and sound of each word and the rhythm and meter of each line, then combining them into a form that conveys not only ideas, but artistry. <sighs> Pardon me, I love words. Can you give me a quick example of what you mean? Oh, of course. Here's the beginning of one of my personal favorites, Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the mome wraths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the juju bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. Um, I didn't really understand all those words. <laughs> of course not. Much of it's nonsense. Nevertheless, when you hear the poem in its entirety, you get a wonderfully rich glimpse into this nonsensical realm. Again, words can be powerful, whimsical, dramatic, or humorous as they are used in poetry. Okay. What are some other ways for people who are strong in word smart to use words? Using language to persuade or convince others to do something or believe something, whether through advertising slogans or political speeches, is another powerful way of being strong in word smart. Also, if you are a teacher, an instructor, even a curriculum writer, explaining things to your students is utilizing a word smart strength. Using analogies or similes or metaphors, these communicate as they compare or contrast, which can bring much greater understanding to the one listening or reading. Another delightful kind of word smart is the way comedians use words to make us laugh. Think about it. Often what makes things really funny is the way one plays with words. For instance, a comedian might say, I went on a once-in-a-lifetime holiday, never again. We hear it, and as our brains process the implications of those words, we're surprised and tickled by the humor. What's funny is the mixed meaning in the arrangement of those words. That's a good one. I'm going to remember that. Okay, you've described for us the way poets, advertisers, politicians, teachers, writers, and comedians are able to use words in amazing ways. It's very helpful to see that there are lots of different ways people can be strong in this kind of smart. Now, we just have time for two more questions. First, why are some good at this while others are great? You know, it's very important to remember that each one has their unique blend of strengths and weaknesses when it comes to each of these eight kinds of smart. For instance, someone might be very good at telling a joke, but not as comfortable with the other areas needed in order to be a stand-up comedian. We need to appreciate and honor the unique blending of gifts in each person. Secondly, every author, every poet, every comedian, every ad copywriter will tell you the way to get better is to practice. Practice is the essential ingredient needed for eventual success. Yes, that's the same thing we heard from Body Smart. Practice, practice, practice. Which leads me to my final question. As parents, how do we encourage our kids to practice working with words without overdoing it. Oh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to address this important question. You see, many people think that the way for their children to improve in this area is to write, write, write. For most, that may actually backfire. So here are alternative ways for your children to enjoy practicing with words. First, make time for reading. Reading interesting or funny books aloud is one of the 
best things you can do for your kids. And then give them time for reading, for them to read what they enjoy most. Next, let your kids play with words. You can memorize jokes, read limericks, write your own puns, play word games like catchphrase and taboo. Another thing is to encourage storytelling. Share your stories with your children. Let them share their stories with you. Listen to good storytellers whenever possible. Finally, you might have your children try keeping a, a journal or diary, like a nature journal, or a diary of good jokes or funny stories. What great advice. We're out of time, so I'd like to end by saying thank you to my special guest, Word Smart, to all of you watching. See you next time.